Hi everyone, my name is Daria and I'm happy to have Bianca Buzdea as the guest for this interview. Bianca is a well-known DevRel engineer and the founder of the educational course DevRel Uni. She helps people advance their DevRel careers. So Bianca, welcome to my channel and please give a short overview of your professional background. Hi Daria, thank you so much for having me and good to see you after it were so. Yeah, so I'm Bianca. I'm originally from uh, Romania, from a very a small place from Romania. After high school, I went uh, studying uh, in uh, Scotland. Then I moved to Berlin, where I'm currently living. I did computer science, and after that, I started working as a solutions architect at uh, AWS. In terms of the web free space, I've been involved since uh, 2017 in a way or another, but maybe uh, 2022 was my year, let's say, uh, because uh, that's when I first attended Eat Denver. And after Eat Denver, I was like, okay, I want to, to go full time uh, into this industry and, and get involved like 100%. So that was the moment when I joined as a web-free DevRel. And since then, uh, I've been uh, working in web-free developer relations. Thank you. So can you give a short overview uh, of, your, of, the, of the current project you worked at Chronicle Protocol? So what is this and what are you doing there? Yes, would love to. So currently, I'm the lead uh, DevRel at uh, Chronicle. At Chronicle, we provide centralized, verifiable oracles. Maybe a, a fun fact, um, Chronicle is the first Oracle uh, on uh, Ethereum, oh. but it's not uh, super well known because it used to be part of uh, MakerDAO until last year in 2023 when it spun out of MakerDAO. So until last year, uh, it used to uh, secure exclusively uh, Maker. Now it's now under the Sky ecosystem after the rebrand, but after after last year in 2023, now the protocol it's open uh, to the whole community, so anyone can can use our oracles. Can you explain the idea of DevRel, like from your perspective? What what is DevRel in general? I think first uh, I'm gonna say that if you ask. 10 people, you're going to have 10 answers be, uh, of uh, what is the world because uh, there are like, so I'm many. Asking you. Yeah, there are so, so many elements and it's quite, um, the definition I would say depends on the person, depends on the protocol, like uh, different different companies have different needs and the definition of developer relations will be always customized based on the needs of the company. But in general, if you're taking, if we're taking like the macro picture, I think it's all about helping developers, helping developer use your technology and helping them uh, be successful using your uh, technology. Also, I like to think of it as a, as a bridge between uh, the, the community, um, the company, the, the protocol from the point of view of the, of the company, of the protocol, you represent the web free uh, community, you're their voice. But from the point of view of the community, you represent the protocol. It's quite a connecting tissue, if you want, which I find pretty exciting. So you're the founder of DevRel Uni. Can you tell a bit more about your course and what is mission and vision? Yeah, so uh, we started DevRel Uni back in February 2020. I think. And uh, back then I was looking myself uh, for such a resource and I realized that uh, for people who want to, to start as a developer, there are like so many resources out there. There are courses, there are boot camps, um, etc. But for people who wants, uh, want to go in the direction of developer relations, there isn't much material out there. And I was like, okay, there is this need in the market if you want. Myself, I'm doing developer relations. I'm connected with a lot of amazing people in the space who are doing uh, developer relations. So we can, we can actually start doing this and helping people out there who want to, to learn faster and to find uh, a community in terms of developer relations. We have both people who just want to get started, but also senior people, if you want, who want to like find a community and just exchange ideas. Uh, how many people uh, took your course? So, so far we had 
five uh, cohorts. Each cohort can be, I don't know, we had, I think, between 30 and 60 people per cohort. We're keeping them rather small to allow people to get to know each other and interact uh, with uh, one another. But yeah, uh, five cohorts so far, a new cohort coming very soon. I'm not sure when this will go on air, but cohort number six might be announced in the meantime. Let's see. Fingers crossed. I know that such great uh, engineers and uh, Web3 people like Patrick Collins, Austin Griffin, and Nader Debit uh, are mentors, lectors, participants of uh, the Real Uni. Was it difficult to invite them to share their knowledge with new DevRels? Yeah, uh, especially cohort number five, we had like a, a, st- a stellar lineup, if you want. We had Austin Griffith, Nader Debit, Patrick Collins. Stefor Pila, Michel Mulders, and myself. With Nader specifically, I'm, I'm extremely grateful to him. And back to the pilot cohort, to cohort number one, I asked several devils, and he was actually the first who confirmed. He was like, I just sent him the message, and he was like, okay, let's do it. And I knew him in, in, indeed. I met him before at the um, Web3 conference in Germany, but I was like extremely amazed how open um, he was to to help. Similarly to to Austin, also I'm extremely grateful to to him. He he supported with uh, cohort number five a lot, and not only him as the individual, but also through a uh, Biddle Guild, they've been powering cohort number five. But also like with all the mentors. I think like they, it's amazing to have them uh, share their expertise, what they've been doing, and to allow basically other people to have their their learning journey much faster because they're they're sharing all that um, information. So yeah, really really grateful to to be working with them. Can you explain me why the real engineers are perceived like rock stars in the web three space? Rock star, I, I like the wording. I think. And I, I would stay, take it like one step further. I wouldn't talk only about DevRel engineers. I would rather talk about the developer relations umbrella, if you want, because mm-hmm, under this mm-hmm. umbrella, you can have different roles. DevRel engineers are indeed one, uh, one of those roles, but you can have uh, developer advocates, uh, technical evangelists, etc. And I think most what most of these roles have in common is that they're rather people facing. Uh, you get to be the face, if you want, of the protocol. Uh, you represent people who think like, okay, this is the, we're talking about this um, protocol. Probably the the DevRel person would be one of the first names that people would uh, think about. And I think it's a it's a great opportunity indeed. You you need to you get to interact with a lot of people. You get to travel to new places. You, you get to deliver talks, um, presentations, workshops. And at the end of the day, you get to help a lot of people, which yeah. I think it's a very um, satisfying feeling. And yeah, I, I can see how people see see this as a rock star, to, to quote you, role. But of course, as with any other roles, there are like pros and cons which are not always visible, but all in all, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great role. And I personally enjoy a lot uh, doing developer relations. Okay. So maybe you can share some difficulties in uh, DevRel engineers careers that we can highlight also. Challenges. In terms of challenges, I think uh, you need to be comfortable with context uh, switching. There are a lot of different hats that you need uh, to wear. Now you're doing like documentation. So you're working, you might be working on some content creation. Then you might have like do some support with some, some customers, etc. So a lot of different things. Uh, this is also true when it comes to, to startups in general. But I think with uh, developer relations in startup, it's even more um, highlighted, let's mm-hmm. say. Then also you need to be... Um, you need to be available to travel for some people, for example, in my case, I don't have like children. I don't have a family. Like I'm, I'm quite flexible, but this is not for everyone. For example, if you're like a fresh mom, let's say, probably it's going to be harder yeah. to, to do this traveling. So it really needs to um, be adapted to your current circumstance. How to measure the success of DevRel engineer in a team? How team can... <clears throat> 
understand that this derail is great or not. We're going into the great conversation of uh, KPIs. And I think uh, with DevRels, or at least this is what I've experienced so, ha- so far, listening to different panels and participating on different panels on uh, developer relations in this topic, KPIs. It's quite a controversial one in this space. I know like DevRels were like, I don't want to measure anything. On the contrary, I know people want to measure every every tiny bit. Personally, I think there should be like some some balance. You need um, data, and I think uh, it's a combination quantitative and qualitative uh, data. And what I mean by that, by quantitative, for example, yes, like uh, achieving the the KPIs um, that you set with the company. Uh, for your developer relations program, but also qualitative, like what's the the feedback that you get from your colleagues, but also what's the feedback that you get from the community, like how many builders you you supported. And I think at the end of the day, if you want like a macro definition of how good a DevRel is, is like the the number of people they help. Uh, And this can be both in the company, like how many of uh, their colleagues they supported, like the different departments that they've been useful to, but also with the developer community, like how many builders they enabled to be successful um, with the technology. And not necessarily phrase like this, like actual the numbers, but actually the the interactions, uh, the meaningful interactions where they've been useful to the company or the community. I know that you participated in many hackathons as a representative of the team of sponsors, and uh, maybe you participated as hacker in some hackathons. So what can you recommend hackers to win the hackathon? Yes, indeed. I, I love hackathons. I've been like a builder myself in the hackathon. I've been an organizer. I've been a judge for hackathon. So I, I wore all the hats to say so. I think this might sound like very basic, but I, I think it's very important. And a lot of people miss this from what I've seen to read carefully the instructions and to actually do what is requested. And I'm going to give here a particular, a specific examples to, to be more clear. For example, if they mention in the requirements that you need to submit like a GitHub repo and the presentation, make sure to also submit that presentation. It, it's very important. Also, I think like, for example, if it's a, uh, An in-person hackathon, another piece of advice I would have is if you have the opportunity, go and present, uh, do a live demonstration, present to the judges if if that's available to you. Maybe some, some, now some like not to do's. I think creativity, it's encouraged and always appreciated. And for example, if you can combine several protocols, that's That's very nice, but by combining here, I mean combining them in a meaningful way to actually uh, deliver a product of higher higher quality or uh, better better features. Not combining just like for ticking the boxes. I know sometimes you can find uh, cases. They are rather isolated cases, but they do exist where people try to integrate every single possible protocol that has a bounty just like to tick the yeah, box yeah, to get more bounties <laughs> yeah but that's like from the point of view of the of the jury of the people who is of the uh, people on the yeah people who are judging that's kind of a red flag so of course if i am to choose bec- between such a team and another team who actually wanted to integrate in a meaningful way i'm going to choose the team who who did so in a meaningful way, who actually wants to provide value rather than chasing the bounty. So yeah, I think that's, it's important to have this balance. Can you recommend the events or maybe books, blogs to young DevRel engineers who want to join the Web3 space and they want to be updated on the latest news and uh, innovations? I like actually, this, this would make a great transition with the previous question because Rather than blogs and books and like this not so active approach, I would rather recommend a more active approach. And here I would say like, go to a hackathon. You will have like the latest, you get to use the latest developments because each protocol usually brings what they have uh, new in terms of features, in terms of product. They want people to experiment with those because it's a great way to to have those tested in a safe environment, if you want. 
go there, experiment, build something. And I know here some, some people will object like, okay, but like, I'm not technical enough to go on the hackathon. I, mm -hmm. I think that's a misconception because... Whether you're technical or not, there is something you can contribute to a hackathon. Uh, there is a team you can join. And if you think the most successful projects are not only projects where there are only, only devs. You need on that team, you need design, uh, you need marketing or someone who's good with storytelling to kind of create, if you want, the, the story of that product and why to present in a very good light yeah. why that product is needed. So definitely there are ways to contribute, even if you might not be technical. So I would encourage people to go to a hackathon, particularly I think eGlobal is doing a fantastic job in terms of hackathons. Actually, we are, we're going to do with them eGlobal San Francisco in October and eGlobal uh, Bangkok. So if you're attending yeah, any yeah, of yeah. these events, come and uh, hack uh, with Chronicle. Uh, the last question I want to ask you about like the general, like what can you recommend to people who want to enter the Web3 space and uh, where to start? So your overall um, advice. I think the, the most important piece of advice is to be curious because like there is so much novelty in this space. And there is always something that you, you need to uh, keep up with. So you need a lot of curiosity. Otherwise, uh, it becomes exhausting if you don't have the curiosity and the, the passion to, to stay up to date. Um, and also, I think it's important to be okay with the fact that there is some opportunity cost in anything. So you need to, to choose your path. And also, I think, to, to choose your niche. I think... It's important to work towards a goal of, okay, I found my niche in this space and then I want to become one of the best people in this niche. I want people who think about this niche to associate this niche uh, with my name, or at least this, this is my vision of, um, of working um, in this space. If you're a developer or someone technical, I think it's always super important to showcase uh, your projects, your, your work, to contribute to different um, open source projects and also to talk about it. I think uh, developers sometimes are, are shy. They, they do a lot of uh, projects, but they not, they don't talk all the time, uh, for example, or on social media or so about those projects, but those who do actually become quite successful because they combine like their skill with actually putting the word out there about uh, what they're building. And maybe like, okay, I'm going to wrap up with one final piece of advice. Seek out a mentorship, like find someone who's like two steps ahead of you that can guide you on the correct path and can basically shorten your learning time. Janka, actually, you're a mentor for all that new DevRel engineers. So thanks for your contribution to the DevRel direction in the Web3 space and in general. And uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, I'm sure that people will love this interview. And uh, I'll leave your links to your Twitter, to your LinkedIn and to Devrel Uni uh, under this video. So guys, you can go and check and follow Bianca. And uh, if you want to uh, learn more about Devrel, you can you can go and uh, submit your application to Devrel Uni. So uh, thanks a lot and see you in the next videos. Uh, thank you so much, Daria, and looking forward to see you in person again at the next conference.